Okay, I could do a, a memory test now, see if you remember any of these issues. But um, moving on to modeling time spent in different health states. Now, just to rem re remember, this is so important. It's, it's going to be a major determinant of your costs and your qualities. Because depending which health state you're in, this usually influences your costs. And so if you spend longer in particular health states, that's going to have an impact on the cost of your, your overall treatment. More than that, the time you spend in a particular health state is directly related to your, the estimated qualities or quality adjusted life years that you're going to experience. And the better the health state, the higher the score we attach to it. So the QA, the quality adjusted part, is increasing. So that's important. We need to know how much time patients will spend in different health states. But of course, the second thing is, we don't usually know that. We don't usually have clinical trial data that tells us that. What we have is some limited period of follow-up. And so we have to go from that to predicting the future, predicting what health state and for how long patients will spend time in. And as I tried to highlight, and I just use one very simple example, azacitidine for myelodysplastic syndromes, Depending how you do this extrapolation, you can get quite markedly, quite markedly different answers. You get different results depending how you do your prediction or extrapolation. Now, this whole area has moved forward quite rapidly in the last, even the last 10 years. Uh, if you look back 10 years ago and look at economic evaluations, they were much cruder uh, at predicting the future, extrapolating from the trial data to a lifetime perspective. And I'm sure it'll continue to change. It's all getting much more sophisticated. And I gave one example of this. This was a particular issue of treatment switching. And you remember treatment switching was where a patient starts on one particular treatment, but possibly when they prog the disease progresses, they switch to the other treatment that's involved in the trial. And uh, the problems that gives rise to, and the, I touched on some of the techniques that are available for trying to um, control for the switching. Now, this list of things is a list of potential difficulties or challenges if you're going to get an accurate estimate of cost effectiveness. Back to our main list. Um, yeah, producing unbiased estimates of um, the treatment effect got so many of these arrows going forward and backwards I have to say I, I, I'm scared as to where I what I press next um, I try this one that's comparators that's that one no it's this one then okay so um, it's this issue here Pro taking information from different sources and combining it now as I've said what we most want to know, at least in a drug context, but it's true also, if we think of this morning, um, public health interventions, you're most interested in what we call head-to-head -head comparisons. The new thing with maybe current practice or best practice against the new thing. Is this new approach better than what we think is currently best practice? More than is it better, is it a better use of resources, is it cost effective? Now, frequently, and this happens qu quite often with um, new drugs, we don't have head-to-head -head data. Partly it might be because 
drugs take a long time to develop. And so what seemed a good comparator back at the time they planned the trial has now changed. That's a possibility. It's partly also regulators are most concerned, not with cost effectiveness, but concerned with safety of a drug. And if you're investigating drug safety, sometimes the best comparator is a placebo. Because then you'll get a much better idea of the relative, re the relative rates of adverse effects. For these reasons, quite often you don't have a head-to-head -head comparison of the drugs you're most interested in. So, what you have to do is engage in indirect comparison. And this involves, this general area is called evidence synthesis. You would, just to repeat, you would prefer head-to-head -head data in order to get an estimate of your treatment effect, but you haven't got it. But there may be evidence out there that's still useful. So, for example, there may be a series of trials involving at least one. Yeah, this, well, it helps my flow going back and forward, these arrows. It doesn't help a lot for handouts. Don't think PowerPoint have worked out a good way around that yet. <laughs> anyway. Um, so apologies, but um, maybe if I numbered the slides, that would have been the way to do it. Yeah, you'll have trial data that maybe involves your intervention, but not your comparator. Or some other trial that involves the comparator, but not your intervention. And so the question arises, can we still use that information in order to help get an estimate of the treatment effect? So, um, these are the different situations we might have. What we really like is a trial linking, comparing, treatment A with treatment B. That's what we really like. Uh, assuming B is, a, is, a, a is perhaps a new thing and B is best practice or something like that. So we'd like that. And uh, that would give us, in principle, a good estimate of the treatment effect, a good estimate of how well drug A works. We might not have that. What we might have is what are called single arm trials, where all the patients got drug A. And some other trial where all the patients got drug B but a single arm to the trial. So no um, randomization of patients at all. And this is what's called an unadjusted indirect comparison. Now I'm sure you can appreciate immediately how suspect this could be, how vulnerable to bias. Because suppose drug A works you know, cures 50% of the patients in its single arm trial, and drug B cures 40%. Can we therefore conclude A is better than B? Well, no, because the patients might be completely different. Uh, these patients might be treatment naive. These may have heavily pre-treated and you've tried lots of other treatments and they've not worked. Uh, the age of the patients could differ. The co comorbidities could differ. Severity of the condition could differ. So this sort of comparison is um, not to be thought of. Think of it in the sense of it's something not to do. On the other hand, you might have what's called an ad adjusted indirect comparison. So you may have a trial that compares treatment A with treatment C, and another trial that compares treatment B with treatment C. And because the two trials have a C arm in common, 
The argument is we can then compare by comparing how, how much better A is than C and compare that with how much better B is than C, we can then make the comparison between A and B because they have a common comparator. So we're not, in this case, we're not interested in C. We're not thinking about should we use C. We're simply using it because the available data gives us a comparison between A and C and B and C. And this is what's called an adjusted indirect comparison. Uh, compared to the unadjusted, the adjustment is they have a, com a common C arm. Finally, what we might have is this series of trials we might have a direct A to B comparison, a comparison between A and C, and a comparison between B and C. Now, um, health economists and some others argue that if this is what we've got, we should try and use it all. Um, some people, mm, Cochrane Collaboration, you might have heard of, who are a big international organization dedicated to improving evidence-based medicine, they argue if you've got a direct comparison, why would you look at this other data? You know, it was a direct comparison A, B that you needed. The health economists and, and others, some others, say that you should always use all the evidence you've got available. And the AC, BC comparisons are also relevant evidence. Of course, there's an issue of how you combine information and also what weight should you give the direct comparison compared to the weight given to the indirect comparison. But it's quite clear, at least to some people, that you should at least use all the information. 